Let's go further and, um, and pull the reed plates off the actual comb itself and have a look inside. To disassemble the harbour, that means take the reed plates off the comb, um, you'll need um, two screwdrivers, a normal Phillips screwdriver and a small um, flathead screwdriver. Um, the, all the main, the main screws are these, um, uh, these ones at the back and the sides, which are the Phillips head ones. I quite often like to work just with a little piece of um, kitchen towel or something on the workbench. It just means that um, screws don't um, you know, roll around and also it sort of protects the, um, the harp um, from being, getting scratched and stuff. So I've taken off all the, all the main um, Phillips head screws. Now we've just got to um, remove these four small front screws. Be careful with these because the screwdriver can slip out of the, um, they just um, cheese head um, slotted screws, the screwdriver can slip, so be careful. Okay, so there's your um, four front screws and now you can remove the reed plates. Uh, so this is the, um, the top reed plate um, and um, you can see the only valves on that one are the ones on the outside which you can see when the harp is, um, you know, uh, assembled. On the inside there's no valves, just your blow reeds. Um, on the inside of the lower reed plate you can see there's a bunch more valves. There's actually 20 valves on this harmonica. Um, so, um, and they're critical to the working of it. Um, so that's the inside of the, the lower, we'll call it the, the draw reed plate. It's actually two reed plates joined together as I've explained. Um, so that's the lower reed plate. And here's the comb. Now the comb is an intric intricately machined um, piece of corian uh, which has been um, you know, cut out in a very uh, um, sort of a convoluted way to allow the extra reeds to um, swing inside. Now Corian is a great um, comb material but it's pretty brittle. If you don't, um, don't bend it or um, drop it because the comb is likely to break. Um, it's great if you just, um, if it, if we're doing its job which is to um, you know hold everything together and um, separate the parts but it's not a rugged um, piece like um, brass or whatever. So be careful with the comb. Okay, just looking at the inside of the lower um, reed plate, these, um, these valves are the ones that um, actually cover the, the regular draw reeds. So when you blow, um, this valve closes down and only the, the air only goes to the X reed, um, which is this, another draw reed here which is set with zero gap. So these are your X reeds. Um, the, the bottom six holes are your X reeds. There, two, three, four, five, six. And then um, up here we have, um, these are the regular draw reeds. That's um, seven draw, eight draw, nine draw, 10 draw. So that's pretty important to understand. Down here, I mean, these reeds all look the same because they're all heading to the back there, but these first six are X reeds, which is set with um, zero gap. Um, and then these top four reeds facing backwards are the regular draw reeds. So that's pretty important to, um, to, to grasp if you're gonna work on the harp. Okay, let's um, put the harp back together again now. So um, you just, you have to be very careful here again. All these valves are um, carefully uh, positioned in the comb. So um, first of all, get your um, comb, your lower comb, um, lower reed plate on the comb. Just have a quick look. Maybe you could flick the valves just to make sure that they're um, working all right. And then get your upper reed plate and then you can start assembling the harp. Now the first thing to do is put one um, screw lightly on that end and then one screw lightly on this end. And then just to get the reed plates and everything just lined up, put the harp down on a flat surface um, and um, then, then you can screw up the two reeds a bit more tightly. I normally do this on the edge of the bench because then I can get the screwdriver to, uh, to in nicely. So I'm just sort of sort of lightly attaching those first two screws. Then I'm going to look down the, um, the, the reed plates and the comb just to make sure everything's lined up. I normally lift it up um, and look at some light. That's looking pretty good. So we've got those two screws in now and now we just got to add uh, the other ones. Don't over tighten the screws. I mean just finger tight is good. You'll either strip the threads or you might buckle the reed plate, so be careful on that. This goes with any harmonica. Some people really 
you know, over tighten the replate screws, and it does. It's actually counterproductive because it makes the harp less airtight rather than more airtight. Um, okay, and then finally these tiny uh, screws at the front. These are all a bit more delicate. They, there is a kind of a, um, a a hole that they will fit into, so they'll locate themselves, and then you just have to be very careful and tighten them up. Now, don't over tighten these, or they will strip. So um, again, if that happens, that's something down to your, um, you know, just just finger tight again. The whole idea of these is simply to um, ensure good a good fit at the front of the reed plates as well as the back. Because um, air tightness is really uh, critical for this kind of harmonica. Okay. Um, one thing I, sh I should uh, maybe talk about is the, the gapping of the X reeds. And I'll just show you a little bit um, about um, how you can gap them for, for optimum bending. Okay, now um, let's, um, for argument's sake, just look at the gapping of the, of the X reeds in the top four holes, because they, they're easier. You can actually see those ones. So these are the ones, remember, facing towards the front of the harmonica, and they've got a zero gap. Now, um, you don't need to really worry about um, them at all unless um, you know, they shouldn't give you any trouble at all, but I'll just show you what happens if you do alter the gap. Um, so let's take um, number seven draw, for example, the X read and seven draw. So basically, at the moment, um, I can get a nice dr uh, draw bend on seven draw. Um, okay, so that's it's that little X read that's allowing me to get that nice bend on seven draw. Now, if I open the gap quite a bit, so now it's got a quite a quite a large gap. It's kind of less less intense. It's more airy. It's still working. Okay, so it'll still work with a with a bit of a gap. Um, and then if I um, if I want to um, reduce the gap, you have to be very careful. You have to basically probe inside the harmonica. Now remember, there's a whole bunch of valves there, so you have to be very careful. Get your little probe under the valve inside the harmonica, and press and press the reed out a bit. I'll just try and show you from this angle. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going under that valve there, which I don't know if you can see. And then I'm pressing on this, um, on the on the X read and, and reducing the gap slightly. So now it's kind of fairly extreme and it'll probably be quite hard to bend. It's still okay actually, it's not too bad. So there's a bit of leeway with the gapping of the X reads really. Um, the reason, the reason for that is that we've got all these valves. Without the valves, the X reads would have to be would still work, but they'd have to be incredibly critically gapped. With the valves, um, you not only get much more air tightness, but you can also experiment with your air, um, your X read gapping. So the, basically, the general rule is that um, the best place for them is to be flush with the reed plate. But if you want slightly easier bending, you can increase the gap so they lift away from the from the reed plate. Um, and if you want more, um, I don't know, security, you can push them in slightly. Um, but there's a, it's a good range of, um, you know, um, adjustment on each X reed. If you want to adjust the, the X reeds um, on, the, on, the, on the, the bottom half of the harp, it's these ones down here. Now this one here is poking out a bit. It's going to work. Um, and um, the good thing about if it's lifting up slightly, the, the blow bend is slightly easier. But if I want to um, uh, uh, just make it maybe a little bit more airtight, I can push it further into the gap as I'm doing there. The, 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 the blow maybe is slightly harder to kick in. So that's the kind of um, little a bit that probably everyone will have their own personal preferences on. Um, but that's the, uh, you know, those are the main things to, to check out. Okay, just going through the basics one more time. On the top reed plate, you have all your active blow reeds, just like on any normal um, blues harp. Um, the top four are covered under some valves, but they are still your active blow reeds. Now on the bottom end of the harp, on the bottom side of the harp, um, the reeds that, the, the draw reeds that you can see above the reed plate here are your active draw reeds. So you can work on them as you do, adjust the gapping and um, the tuning. Just be careful not to damage the valves around them. Um, underneath these valves here are the X reeds. 
which allow these um, allow your blow blow reeds to bend. These are draw reeds as well, um, but they're facing back to the back of the harp, and uh, they are um, uh, set with a zero gap. So that right under here, you can see those reeds. You shouldn't actually need to um, touch them at all, really, and because they're set by us in an optimum position, and um, there's not much that can go wrong with them. So just you know, hopefully you can just ignore them altogether. Up the top end here, um, things are a bit more visible. You've got your um, active draw reeds. Now these are now um, facing um, away from the away from the harp. There's your um, seven draw, eight draw, nine draw, ten draw, and then you've got your X reeds, which are set with a zero gap. These are the ones that allow the draw reeds to bend, and they are facing this way. So that's the ultra, that's the absolute basics of the of the harmonica. Once you understand that, you can work on the reeds and um, be confident that you're not going to be you know altering or retuning the wrong reed so that's really important to understand before you get started working on this harp okay i hope that helps and um, if you've got any questions or whatever you can email us um, inquiries at xread.com go to the website and the um, the email link is there okay have fun with your mb30